This year I found out how much my girlfriend loves games with horses. And I joked that it gave me the idea to introduce her to some games purely on the premise that they let you ride horses. <laughs> God damn it. All jokes aside, there's actually a surprising amount of games out there that involve some sort of horseback riding. There are some great options to choose from, but I couldn't think of a better choice than a game I've wanted her to play since we started this series. I finally made my girlfriend play The Witcher 3. My girlfriend hasn't exactly been thorough when it comes to the games I've had her play, and for the most part, I don't complain. It's awesome enough that she sits down to play in the first place, but I'd be lying if I didn't say a little part of me hoped she'd eventually warm up to the idea of completionism in some way or another. I see any damaged shrines, I'll take care of them. Won't go out of my way though. <laughs> no promises. Deep down, I felt like if there was any game that could create that itch for her and get her to embrace side questing and optional content, it would be The Witcher. That being said, when she left White Orchard mostly unexplored after defeating the Griffin, she had me sitting there like, don't you want to look around a bit first? Ah, Vesemir! I'm going after that booty. Although it's easy to want a race to find all the answers to your questions, can we cut to the chase? The Witcher is a game rich with story. Some questions before I start. There's plenty to find so long as you're willing to look for it. I'd compare her initial approach to playing The Witcher with someone discovering a new television series and trying to binge watch it all at once. It has such a strong opening, and even without playing the first two games, you want to know more about this world. Oh, I'm gonna like this game. The deeper you dig, the more little details you start to find. Tamira and Mizla. Thanks. I'm not gonna be able to remember any of these names. A lot of people experience side quest fatigue when playing The Witcher 3. She dealt with something more along the lines of side quest paralysis. During her time in White Orchard, she kept getting annoyed with all the little chores there were to do before fighting the Griffin. Must be out hunting. Oh God. Every time she'd uncover a new side mission or place of power off the beaten path, it created more anxiety than intrigue, because as much as she wanted to see what the deal was, she also really wanted to see what came next in the story. This chick got attacked by the griffin because she was meeting a boy in the woods, so she was walking in the woods at night during a war with a live griffin around. She's got a lot of garlic. She does. <laughs> she was explaining all this to me over dinner, and I remember just laughing and being like, hey, guess what? That's the game. No goat. <laughs> Won't work. So now to go find a fucking goat? <sighs> Will you help the me side. Goat back? Here, goat. Here, princess. Oh my god, she's so cute. Princess? Come on, damn it. Where are you going? Princess, get the fuck over here. Oh my god, princess. Ow. <sighs> Part of what makes the game fun is getting lost in it and finding something you weren't looking for. Usually I commend her on playing these games at a much slower and steadier pace than I would. But ironically in The Witcher, the tortoise became the hare. People out of my way. God damn it, I am on a horse. I don't want to run you over, but I will. While playing The Witcher, there's a lot of reading and listening to be had. A huge chunk of your time in the game is spent inside of dialogue trees, and it's up to you to decide how vocal a Witcher you're going to be. One of the funny things she picked up on was how the dialogue options don't usually match what actually gets said. You'll select what you want him to say, and he'll translate it into Geralt for you. Huh. You black ones aren't so scary after all. Can even be nice if you want to. <laughs> don't get it He's sassy. Want you gone by the time I count to <laughs> One. Is it just me, or is that none of your fucking business? Geralt, we have no healing oh. items. What made this funny was that Geralt tends to have a bit of an attitude during dialogue, and so a lot of the time she'd end up coming off way more aggressive than she meant to. I had forgotten how insolent you can be. <laughs> that said, depending on your dialogue choices, Geralt can be as quiet or talkative as you make him. And boy, does she like to ask questions. Time to go. I get the feeling that Geralt's like a strong, silent type, but I'm gonna Wait. make him really chatty. <laughs> I mentioned before that one of the main reasons I picked Witcher was that it let you ride a horse. Oh my god! Geralt's horse Roach manages to live up to the expectations set by the noble steed she's encountered in other games thus far. Of course, my girlfriend always gets attached to the horse in games, so no one should really be that surprised. I'm saving all the horses. But it's a little ironic in The Witcher. It's my understanding that the reason Geralt names all his horses Roach is to not get too attached to them. You're no Roach, but I bet we can be friends in time. You've got that all-important quality every roach has to have. 
You don't talk much. <laughs> as you can probably imagine, that didn't really work as intended here. Hi, Grouch. Hello. Every time you call Roach, it's usually a dice roll whether you get something normal or something completely out of left field. My girlfriend was more excited that the game had a horse button than anything else, but she made the point that Roach being on the roof wouldn't be such a big deal if Geralt didn't take so much fall damage. Even still, one of the most lovable things about this game is how finicky Roach can be. Oh my god, Roach just walked through. <laughs> Through the gate. Despite the job description of a witcher being a monster hunter, it was common that she'd get so caught up in the drama of the story, she'd forget combat was even a thing. And he's on a horse, shit, I'm just trying to have a nice ride, God damn it. Now, the combat in The Witcher 3 isn't as intimidating as it looks, although as soon as she was introduced to the mechanic of having two different swords, I could tell she was bracing herself. In reality, it turned out to be a lot simpler once she got into the rhythm of combat. If you see a red health bar, use the steel sword, and a silver one uses a silver sword. Easy. Remembering which direction is which on the D-pad is another story, though. She's on her own for that one. Hey, leave my horse alone. One thing I noticed is she had a hard time wrapping her head around healing over time versus instant healing. I watched plenty of fights where she'd deathmatch a group of drowners, water hags, without ever attempting to heal. From what I understand, her main problem was taking the health over time concept a little too literally, where she thought the only time you could heal was during downtime, like getting from point A to point B on horseback. Logically speaking, yeah, it would make sense that Geralt could dig into his sandwich on the road to Novigrad and recover from battle. But let's try not to forget this is a game. Ironically, it was the authenticity of the Witcher world that had her scratching her head about the idea of wolfing down a backpack full of food in the middle of combat. Gotta eat the lettuce. Right, just straight up eat the lettuce. It's true that the fighting in this game isn't quite like anything she's played before, but I was really surprised by how quickly things would start going south. Get hit once, not super necessary to heal. Get hit again, maybe now's a good time. Three times, okay, now you're starting to worry me a little. It started to feel like she was attempting a no-hit run of every encounter. Don't go giving us any ideas. Her reluctance to use signs was a bit of a head-scratcher to me. Not necessarily because of her forgetting that she had them all the time. That's pretty much what we've come to expect from her. But what I thought was most bizarre was when using anything other than Igni, she'd switch to the sign of choice, use it, and then switch right back to Igni. Even in fights where she'd cast Erdin or Quen multiple times, she'd always switch to Igni in between casts. She wasn't even using Igni, so I don't really know what was going on. Sorry, Roach. That's not what I was trying to do. Although Igni didn't get a lot of use in combat, it saw plenty of use out of it. Try not to mind this. For their return, I want everything to be as they Whoops. Every time she'd stumble upon some unsuspecting NPC's house during her adventures, she'd waste no time robbing them blind of all their crafting materials. Despite doing this, I'm confident she's never crafted a single thing, and she'll probably struggle to even show you where the crafting menu is. All that said, one gripe that frequently came up was the constant lighting of candles with Igni. Having it happen only a million times, she actually got a little frustrated with the game. Oh my god. But it never stopped her from looting these poor people's homes. God damn it. You have to give The Witcher credit for its intricate world. When you're enthralled, it's hard not to get lost in it and really start feeling like you're a witcher. I'm a witcher. It's not the first time my girlfriend has gotten fully immersed in a game's world. That was nuts. Oh, oh my god. Hello. Hi. But it's a rare thing for one to change how we talk about the world outside of the game so much. These days, even the slightest gust of wind has her shooting me a look and growling. Wind's howling. I don't know how to probably put into words the phenomena we've been experiencing lately, but put best, all I can say is that when my girlfriend wants to respond to a question I have in the affirmative manner, it's not your usual yes or okay, but rather a resounding ah! It was around the time she started complaining about encumbrance that she finally dipped her toe into one of the many side quests of the game, the horse racing. Oh my god, you're swerving. <laughs> Jesus, can you run in a straight line? No. Holy, what are you doing? Let's go. Stay in front of him. Don't let him get in front. No. Go, go. You got this. There you go. Oh, I did end. Okay. Oh. How to keep you on your toes. That was dicey. As caught up as she was in the Finding series storyline, she was just too fed up with constantly being overburdened. Although I explained to her about a thousand times, she's still annoyed that upgrading Roach's saddlebag somehow makes Geralt able to carry more stuff even when Roach is nowhere in sight. Regardless of the game's logic, it opened the door up for something a lot more interesting than Princess Cirilla. Because after winning her new saddlebags in Crow's Perch, she finally played her first round of Gwent. Ever play Gwent? I made the mistake of believing that The Witcher 3 would be the selling point for tackling optional content in games. But really, I should have known it would be none other than The Witcher TCG. Once you get hooked on Gwent, it's hard to focus on anything else. Oh my god, let's play Gwent. 
Instead of being a game about leveling up and slaying monsters, all of that takes a backseat to seeking out people with rare cards and challenging them to a duel, Battle City style. Stop saving the world and get a hobby! Suddenly, she was no longer limited to the places the quests were taking her, but rather the whole world was just a massive scavenger hunt for cool new trading cards. It became such a distraction that it completely derailed her progress through the game. All her momentum grinded to a halt and her priorities flipped on their head. At the time of writing this, she's not even halfway done with the game, and it's only slowing down as she unravels more subplots and side stories. Hell, she hasn't even figured out how to get to the Skellige Islands yet. Yes, yeah, sailing my ass. She just teleported her ass to Skellige. As much as I wanted her to finish the game, I also don't want to rush her through it. The fact she's finally starting to crack her any percent shell and dip her toes into completionism is more than I can ask for. As of now, she's back in White Orchard trying to tie up all the loose ends she left behind at the beginning of her journey. Wait, gives eight? Rest assured, we'll be visiting Witcher 3 again someday, but at this point in time, giving a forecast into when is just impossible. Her adventures with Geralt are far from done, but I really want to let her take her time with this one. It's hard to be patient. Trust me, no one knows that better than me. But if we do this right, I'm sure it'll be a story you won't believe. But first, how about a round of Gwent? <laughs> <laughs>